A recent survey from the Federal Reserve found that more Americans feel financially comfortable than any time since the survey began in 2013. Comfortable? Look at them gas prices. They ain't comfortable to me. Hell no. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about this excellent clip I found on the internet of Savannah Hernandez, a great reporter, by the way. But she's asking people on the street, all black people, what do they think about the job that Joe Biden is doing right now? Their responses are much different than what Joe Biden's administration has been saying. They're saying, as far as the Biden administration, that everything is looking great. We have great economic metrics and things are on the up and up and all this, that, and the third. But all these people on the street, all black folks now, they're saying, hey, wait a minute. These, these gas prices and this and that and this and that is not going very well. I don't believe what he's saying. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty, let's go ahead and roll this clip. As always, this clip will be available in the description box if you want to see it without my commentary. But let's not waste too much time and get straight into it. All right, guys, the Biden administration has been telling us that America is in one of the best spots that it's been financially and economically. Since it took office, families are carrying less debt. A recent survey from the Federal Reserve found that more Americans feel financially comfortable than any time since the survey began in 2013. Comfortable? Look at them gas prices. They ain't comfortable to me. Hell no. Joe Biden says that we're in we're in a strong economy, that we're doing great. Do you believe that? No, we're not financially stable, comfortable or nothing like that. But when Trump was in office, I was feeling really good. Really? Yes. Trump. Trump. Right, right on, man. You already know what it is. You can see it like you don't need anybody to tell you what's going on. You don't need to watch television or listen to Joe Biden or even listen to me. You can see it. Under Trump, throughout the entire four years, the country was one way. And now, just in the first year and some change, what, like 18, 19, 20 months or whatever it is, 18 months, just in this little bit of time, we've seen the country just go downhill. And it is what it is. So, Joe Biden, too much, you'd rather have Trump back? I want Trump back. I do not, I'm not for Biden. I'm not for him. Ain't no comfortability around nowhere. It really hurts America with the gas prices. Because the one we have to get to work, and if we can't get to work and we got to spend all our money on gas that we going to work on, that mean you can't pay your bills. So it's an endless circle of uh, endless debt. Everybody gonna go in debt, you know, sooner or later. Because it, like what's happening now is everybody is feeling the heat from you know every angle of the society. So yeah, I feel like no, it's not true. It's it's bullshit, bullshit completely because. Like, rent prices is crazy. I'm not sure where this is. This, I mean, that's that's probably a good question. You might have like, where is this being recorded? I'm I'm hearing California accents, and if it's California, then oh my goodness, you guys, you about to be ten dollars a gallon, and that's that's just unaffordable. It's really unaffordable. We we paying I don't know how much percent more, but I would say at least three three or four hundred more than we was paying two years ago. Like that's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Salaries aren't going up, so. How are we supposed to make the difference in income and rent? It doesn't make sense. So when the Biden administration comes forward and says that economically and financially our country's doing really well, do you think that's a lie? Yep, I think they're blowing smoke up, up out behind us. I think it's Biden's fault. Trump said it would happen. Like, sure we did. would deal with a lot of the stuff that we dealing with back when we had the Great Depression. I miss Daddy T, Trump. <laughs> I miss Daddy T, for real. I mean, like... I respected him because he was real about his opinion, even though I didn't always agree with him, but he kept it real with us. We know what, it, what was going to happen. Like, things was better. Like, the economy was better. I mean, can't say it no better than that. Again, shout out to Savannah Hernandez, at Sav, S-A-V-S-A-Y-S, at Sav says. I think she was on Twitter but got suspended. I wonder why. I wonder why she got suspended from Twitter for putting out truth bombs like that. But that was very well done. Shout out to her. And shout out to Anna News. I think they were the ones that put it out on Twitter. They were the ones that kind of like I boosted it on Twitter because Savannah's not on there. But that was very well said. Everybody can see what's going on. Now, the the typical um, reaction, the typical points that left uses to attack interviews like this. Oh, well, it's the white man. He's putting out. Who was white in there? Wasn't the white person in there? Savannah, obviously Hispanic. 
all, everybody she was interviewing, you got black males. So I don't understand. You got an Hispanic woman, black males, talking about what's happening right now with the country. She's asking them open-ended questions, asking them about things that uh, President Joe Biden said himself. And they're like, nah, this is BS. This ain't right. Look at what's going on with these rent prices. I mean, and, and the gas is out of control. Now, the, the, the craziest thing is when people like Pete Buttigieg and others, normies that don't understand the way that money works, which is crazy. You got a guy in the federal government in a high level position that doesn't understand the way money works, or maybe he does, but is lying about it or not really being truthful, kind of being facetious. But anyway, Buttigieg is like, hey, man, basically, you know, buy an electric car. You'll save on gas. And I've seen that same argument where if you buy Tesla's, I think if you buy a certain kind of Tesla or have a certain plan with it, you get free fill-ups at these uh, charging stations, the Tesla charging stations. But is it free if you already didn't pay for it when you bought your car? And how much do these cars cost? Understand this. A lot of your average people are just driving around on cars that might have 175,000 miles on it and it's paid off and it's only worth five grand. So let me get this straight. If people are struggling to put gas in their car, it's only worth $5,000 and it's paid off maybe $10,000 because of the way used cars are. But let's just say it's worth $10,000 and they're putting gas in it and it's paid off. How are they going to purchase a Tesla for like 50 grand, 60 grand on, on a low end, maybe 40, but probably right around 50 or more. How are they going to purchase a car for that much? I mean, the gas is a problem. So how are they going to just go buy a brand new car? It, if they did buy a brand new car, what would the savings be as far as the gas prices or what they pay per month? So let's just say, for example, to fill up your car right now with these crazy high prices, it'd be a hundred bucks a week in a new price. That's 400 per month. Let's say before it was 50 a week. That was 200 per month. So your price has doubled 200 more dollars a month. That's your extra gas cost, right? Okay. Now you buy a Tesla, what you gonna pay for a note? Five hundred bucks, six hundred bucks. Let's just say six hundred bucks. That's two hundred more than your new gas bill. So what's the point? You're paying more money. Are uh, you being quote unquote eco friendly? But here's a question that I have for all the the tree huggers out there: Where's your electricity coming from? Huh? Is it just coming from the sky? From from pixie dust? From uh, Hunter Biden's cocaine stash? Is it that big to power up Tesla chargers? I don't think so. Where is the actual energy coming from? The same thing that your gas at the pump comes from. The same exact resource. But, you know, put petroleum, gas, like it's coming from the same place. Okay. It, it, when you turn on the lights in your house, it's all coming from the same place. So, again, what's the purpose? Maybe it runs cleaner on the road. But, again, you still got to power it up. And that emission has happened. Has it happened in somewhere. You still have a CO2 in the atmosphere. And if you don't have a lot of CO2 here, you have in India and China to set to, to offset, to import things over here, like solar panels, other kind of stuff that we're trying to use to be quote unquote green. So what's the purpose? You're paying more money and you're getting this fuel source that originates from quote unquote dirty fuel anyway. Why do it? Why do it? I don't really get it. It doesn't make any sense. You know, and then also with the gas prices, it's, it's furthering inflation because you're not going to have all electric airplanes, all electric uh, rail cars, all electric trucks to get goods from point A to point B, you know, and, and manufacturing. At a certain point, you're going to have to use fossil fuel to have the economy that we have in this world, to have the things that we have in this world. All our creature comforts is coming from fossil fuel. Ultimately, you may see the end product be electric or quote unquote clean, but it started with fossil usually. So if the prices of a barrel of oil going up and up and up and up around the world, that's going to impact everything. And then some are going to say, well, it's not Biden's fault because the prices of gas are or prices of barrel of oil are set internationally. Well, why is it that a gallon of gas in California is hovering around $7, $8, but over here in Tennessee, it's not quite hit $5 yet. It's like right around $4.49, something like that. 
how is it almost double in one state versus the other? Obviously, there are other factors aside from the international stuff that's going on. But as I close, I want to say this. Shout out to everybody out there for keeping it real, for being all the way authentic and saying the obvious that no, things aren't going very well. And yes, this guy in office is to blame. Very simple. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about the street interviews where they quote unquote cherry picked? Is that the general sentiment of people in America? People that may not necessarily be on television. They're not the political people. They're not the suit and tie, Fox News, uh, talking head. They're not them they're just regular everyday people. Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at, or at least you should. I think that sentiment is shared by a lot of people. If you're not so caught up in the political stuff and you could just see things for what, for what they are, you saw what the country was like under Trump. You experienced it. You paid the prices. You lived it. You saw what it was under Trump. Now you're seeing what it is under Biden, and you're not liking what you see so far under Biden. It's so simple. If you're going to blame presidents for this, blame presidents for that, let's, let's do the all the time and not just when it benefits us to do so. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.